Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah and day 11 of the Halloween Craft Countdown where I'm sharing 20 Halloween themed Cricut projects in 20 days. 10 of the projects are designed by me and 10 are guest designer projects from some of my crafting friends. Today is one of my designs and it's this customizable spiderweb shaped greetings card. The card has a cutout edge in the shape of a spiderweb and the middle of the card comes blank so that you can add your own image or photo. I've chosen a watercolour effect spider to fit with the web theme, but you can put whatever you like in the middle. The files for this project are free for the next 24 hours. Here's how to download them. Register a free ticket for the Halloween Craft Countdown at craftwithsarah.com forward slash HCC 23. If you're already registered, check for an email from me with subject line Halloween Craft Countdown ticket information or any of the other emails from me that you've been sent throughout the countdown. Can't find them? Check your junk or spam box to see if they've gone there by mistake. These emails contain the link to view the countdown projects and download today's files. Scroll down this page to find today's project. Click the button to start the files automatically downloading to your computer or mobile device. Each download is only available for free for 24 hours after it goes live. If you've missed some, check out the Instant Access Bundle at craftwithsarah.com forward slash HCC 23 bundle, which gives immediate and ongoing access to all of the files from the Halloween Craft Countdown, plus loads of extra bonus designs. All downloads come in zip folders. You will need to unzip them before you can upload the files into Cricut Design Space. Once you've downloaded and unzipped the folder, it's time to get the SVG file into Cricut Design Space. Open up Design Space and start a new project and then press upload on the left and then upload image. You can then either click browse to find a file on your computer or drag and drop it in. Make sure you choose the unzipped version of the folder and then the file to choose is the one which starts SVG in the file name. I'll click and drag that in and this is what it should look like. Press upload and then when it appears in your recent uploads, click on it to get the green border and press add to canvas. And here's how it's loaded in and this has come in at the correct size, which is 10 inches wide and five inches tall to make a five by five inch card. If you want to change the sizes, you absolutely can, but I'm gonna keep it at this. Now you might be wondering what this white piece on the left is for. And this is actually going to be cut from white card or paper and glued to the inside of the card so that you've actually got somewhere that you can write your message and it will be seen. You can leave this off if you want to, but I just figured that because our base card is black, it's going to be hard to actually write inside there. So if we put a little bit of white card inside, that'll be much easier to write the message on. I have got a separate tutorial video on how you can do the writing with your Cricut machine so you can actually get your Cricut to write the message on the inside of the card. I'll drop a link to that in the description of this video in case you want to check that tutorial out. But for now, let's continue with our spiderweb card. I want to add a score line down the middle to make this easier to fold. So with my card selected, oops, I want to click on it to select everything. So my whole project is selected. And then press ungroup by clicking the little um, ungroup button at the top of the layers panel. Go into shapes and choose a score line and make this the same height as your cards. Mine five inches. You kind of won't be able to see it because it's black on black but if you move it down a bit you can see it better. Select the score line, press shift on your keyboard and choose the main card and then press align and center. And what that's done is it's put the score line exactly in the middle of the card. With those two layers still selected, press attach. Attach is what tells the Cricut that we want it to do that score line on this piece of card. And by moving this about, you can now see this inside piece. Oops, not that one. This one. This will be cut from silver mirror card or glitter card and stuck to the inside to fill in all those gaps in the spiderweb. 
Although, of course, if you'd rather have the gaps showing, you can absolutely do that instead. Just bear in mind that it means you'll be able to see whatever you write on the inside of the card through the holes in the spider web. All right, let's put this back down the bottom and just put that back. There we go. It's not quite aligned, but it doesn't matter. All right, so what we need to do next is add a picture to the middle of the spider web. There's two different layers here. There is a silver one, which I'm gonna to use to make a little border. And then this green one, I want to add a spooky Halloween picture to the middle of. You could also add a photograph or anything you want, but I'm going to get some spooky spider themed watercolor artwork that matches the design of the card. And for that, I'm heading to creativefabrica.com. Creative Fabrica is one of my favorite places to get graphics and fonts for my crafting because from just $4.99 a month, you can get as many downloads as you want. And there are hundreds of thousands. Actually, if you look at this, there are millions to choose from. So you'll never run out of crafting ideas again. To join Creative Fabrica, check the link underneath this video as I'll include my special link in there so that you can sign up. But first, let's have a look at where to find some spider graphics. All right, I'm going to search for watercolor spider and see what we've got. And straight away, this one is looking perfect. So I wanted something that still had the Halloween vibe, but also that adds a little bit of colour. And you could do whatever you want in here, but I didn't really want, I don't really want a cutesy spider. I want one a bit scary. Those ones are quite nice too with the roses, but I'm going to go for this first set. So because I am a member of Creative Fabrica, I can just click download and download that straight to my computer. But if you're not a member, then once you found your graphics, you would need to sign up or you can use graphics from anywhere that you like to find your graphics. It doesn't have to be Creative Fabrica. I've downloaded and unzipped the folder from Creative Fabrica. So now I can upload my little spider watercolor image. So I'll click upload again and then go into upload image and then I'll drag in my chosen picture. There are lots to choose from. I quite like this one and also this one. Hmm. Oh, I like that one too. So many to choose from. Hmm. I'm going to go for this one. <laughs> this is a print then cut image. So you see the upload screen looks different to how it did when we laid it in the card base. Choose complex as the image type and then press continue. I don't need to change anything on this screen. So I can just press apply and continue. And then on the next screen, choose print then cut image and press upload. It might take a little while because these can be quite large images. Once it appears in your recent uploads, click on it to get the green border and then press add to canvas. And again, this can be a little bit slow and <laughs> it's likely to load in huge. This is coming at 25 inches, which is just ridiculous. So let's put that back down to let's say four inches, which is much more manageable for the project. I'll zoom in a little to make the next bits easier to see. I'm going to cut this shape here out of my spider. To make that easier, we'll go arrange, bring to front. So this is now going to be above my picture and then under operation, change it to a guideline. And it's kind of hard to see but now that shape is just giving me a pink outline, which means I can move it around the spider and still see where it's going to cut. So I can resize this and know exactly what parts of my picture are still going to be visible once I've cut it into that shape. I quite like that one. All right, I'm gonna click my guide 
and duplicate it to make a copy and just leave that over there for now. The two that I have already over here, so my spider and the guideline, let's select those and then press slice. And that will cut my spider out of that shape. I've now got my slice result and actually this didn't change so I didn't need to duplicate it. But it's always good to do it just in case. And then I've got my middle bit here and I've got the um, excess that I don't need anymore. All right, so I'm gonna undo that to put them back in place and this is important. Your picture might not have color all the way to the edge. For example, if you've uploaded a PNG with a transparent background, yours won't appear all white like mine does here. It might be see-through. And if it's see-through, that means that if there are any parts that didn't touch the shape you've cut out of, for example, these white bits here, they might be see-through if you had a different type of image. Um, that means your Cricut's gonna try and cut all the way around the watercolor. And that's not what we want. We want it to cut around the shape. So I delete my excess, I don't need that one. And then for my shape, I'll change it back to a basic cut and then go arrange, send backwards to move it underneath my um, picture. And you can't see mine because as I said, mine does have white filled in. But if you're using a transparent PNG, you'll probably still be able to see some of that green. Change it to a color that matches your project. I'll go for a white and then select both the layers. So the watercolor or whatever graphic you're using and your shape and then press flatten and that joins them together. So now, even if your picture hadn't originally been cut all the way to the edge, now it will be because it's now taking that original shape and I don't need that one so I can just delete it. So that will be cut and go in the middle of the spider web, which is really cute. I love how that looks. And this would now be ready for me to cut. So let's click make it and see what we've got. This is my print then cut. And I have a separate video on how to do print then cut with a Cricut machine, which I'll link to either in the description of this video, if you're watching it on YouTube, or if you're watching it on my website, then I'll add the link underneath the video on the page that you're looking at. So that you can go and look at that one and see how to print and cut on a Cricut machine. And the reason I've done that separate is that I've got quite a few tutorials coming up that use print and cut. So rather than kind of film the same thing every time, I thought I'd just do it once. So this is my print then cut and don't worry that you can't see the edges here. They do still exist. It's just it's white on a white background, which is why they don't appear. But your Cricut will still be able to see them and it is going to cut it exactly as I want. And then we've got the other bits here, my white to go on the inside, my silver. And I'll change that to A4 and then my black card. And you can just about see that score line going down there. So go ahead and get everything cut out and then we'll see how to stick together our spiderweb card. Here's all the pieces of my card cut out and I've got my holographic card for the spiderweb, which is really, really pretty. Glitter card would work lovely too if you've got it. And this is so easy to put together. We'll start by doing the inside of the card. I'm using Kalau glue, which I really like because it doesn't bend or wrinkle the card. And I've put it into these needle tip applicator bottles to make it easier for me to stick. I'm going to start with my insert, which kind of replicates that spiderweb effect on the back of the card. Good amount of glue on there. And then kind of put that in the middle. And that gives you a really fun area to write your message on. And I just like the little cutout gives that extra effect. I have not stuck that on very straight, have I? Never mind. <laughs> Next, I'm going to add the holographic effect to the inside of the card. 
I'm going to glue that so it perfectly matches up with the spider web. So this is going to need quite a lot of glue because my holographic card is thick. I'm going to make sure I get all the way around the edges, which is where these needle tip bottles come in. Very, very helpful. Oops. I always rush on a video. Try and get it in all these spikes. This should line up exactly with the edge of the spider web and the top and bottom of the card. So be careful it gets into the right position. And just look how pretty that is, especially with the rainbows when it goes into the lights. Just going to nudge that because it's got slightly out of place. Okay. okay. Now I just need to attach the front of the card. I've got my other holographic piece here, which I'll add some foam squares to. You could still glue it, but I like to give it a little bit of pop of dimension. Straight in the middle. And then I'll glue my spooky spider on top of that. And that's it. <laughs> I told you that it was going to be easy. I've got my spider web card all finished and looking super spooky in time for Halloween. Now that you've made your spooky spider web card, you might be thinking about an envelope to put it in. I've included a free SVG file of an envelope which you can use. To find it, look in the download folder that you got the original card in. I'll upload it so you can see. So we'll go upload, upload image. Here's my download folder, the unzipped one. And within there is a separate folder called envelope. And then we've got an SVG file in here. And this is what it looks like. Again, because I use envelopes so much in my tutorials, I do have a separate video and written tutorial which goes through how to use these envelopes in a step-by-step -step manner, including how to perfectly size it to fit your spiderweb card. Because when you upload it by default, it's probably either going to be too big or too small. Let's just have a look. See, this would be way too small. You wouldn't fit your card in that envelope. So again, I'll add the link to that video in the description of this one or underneath the video if you're watching on my website so that you can go and see that separate tutorial on how to use this envelope SVG for your spider web card. And not only does that video show how to resize the envelope and get it all cut out and stuck together, but also has instructions on how you can get your Cricut to write the address on the envelope itself, which makes it so easy, especially if you're sending lots of cards at the same time. But for now, I'm going to end this video. So go ahead, check out that envelope one if you need to make an envelope. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the little spider web card. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make a spiderweb greetings card with customized print then cut decoration. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more Cricut crafts and Halloween fun. I hope to see you tomorrow for day 12 of the Halloween craft countdown. Don't forget the link to get the cut files for today's project. It's craftwithsarah.com forward slash HCC 23, but they're only free to download for 24 hours after this video goes live. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.